Hello, and welcome to Hunters Living with Art. Um, been a little bit of time since we saw you last, but um, it's been a little crazy for everyone. But we're back in production, and I'm very happy about that. We're using the new technology available to everyone. And today, I could not be more thrilled about my guest. Um, I first discovered him back in the 90s, that's the 1990s, um, on a TV series called The Human Animal. It was on Discovery Channel or something like that. And I was riveted. I, I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I've talked about this ever since. Flash forward to last year at the library, I found a book called The Lives of the Surrealists, checked it out, devoured it, and um, had to buy it. That's how much I loved it. And I noticed that the author was the same guy that did the TV show that I love so much. So I researched him and was blown away by what I found. So he is a zoologist. He is an ethologist. He um, has written, produced, and hosted numerous um, television shows and documentaries. He's written, you know, probably over a hundred books um, for this year alone. And he's a surrealist painter. He's a surrealist artist. He currently has a show in London right now at Beaux Arts Gallery. He's 92 years old and more than any of those things to me, he is my absolute muse. I am so honored to welcome Mr. Desmond Morris. Wow, that's quite a build up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's true, it's, it is heartfelt. So um, I, I was telling a friend of mine, Terry Stewart, that I would be interviewing you. And he, of course, has read The Naked Ape. And he asked a question that I thought, that's a really good one. And it was, who am I interviewing? The zoologist or the artist? Who's with me today? <laughs> Depends which hemisphere of my brain you're interviewing. <laughs> because the human brain has... Uh, slight specializations. Uh, one, brain, one half of the human brain is concerned with um, accountancy and calculation, the other half more concerned with imagination and poetry. Uh, most people have one dominant half to their brain. Uh, an accountant would have just used one half of his brain. A poet would use the other half. I'm lucky because I've used both halves. Um, people say, how can you be a, 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 a cold-nosed scientist and a hot-nosed artist? Um, it's, it's quite simple because I just use a different mental process. When I'm a scientist, I'm analytical. I analyze everything. I, I, I measure everything. I count everything. Uh, I want to know how many things, how many times something has happened in a particular period. Uh, I want to study human body language all over the world, uh, and it's it's a uh, it's a matter of classification and analysis. But when I'm uh, in my studio, because I've always had a study and a studio, a study with all my scientific books and the studio with all my artwork, and uh, when I'm in my studio. Uh, a totally different mental process takes over. What happens is that I let myself go offline, go, uh, I, I let my, all my conscious thoughts are thrown away and my unconscious mind takes over. So that when I'm painting, I often say that the paintings paint themselves. Um, I sometimes think that when I come down in the morning, it'll have gone on painting itself in the night. Uh, the paintings just develop and grow organically. And I have no way of, uh, of imposing rational control on that. Um, I just let my imagination have free. That is, of course, the basis of surrealism, is to allow the unconscious mind to take over. And uh, so it's like dreaming on canvas. Uh, and I spend hours in my studio uh, just watching a painting grow. And the interesting thing is that, although I don't know how I, how my brain does that, the moment I make a mistake, I know. I don't know how I know. But if something goes wrong, I know it's gone wrong. Heaven knows how 
I know that. But then I scrap it and start again. So well, there is some. That's definitely odd to me in surrealism because how do you know it's a mistake? Well, the, the, the that's the weird thing. But in my case, you see, I have. I better go back to the guy. I started painting in 1944 during World War II and when I was at school. And in 1947, I'd reached a stage where I painted a picture called Entry to a Landscape. And you could, you could see through, there were, there were some rocks, you could see through the rocks, through this cleft, a strange world. And I entered that world and I've been exploring it ever since, since 1947 to 2020 about 3,000 paintings altogether, no, more than 3,000 now. And those paintings have become peopled with strange biomorphic shapes which evolve. They, they change as, as I, uh, from year to year, and they're always changing and growing. It's, it's, it's like a parallel evolution which is happening on the canvas. Um, and it has its own rules. Uh, evolution has rules. Um, see, when I'm doing my scientific studies, I'm aware of all the various uh, growth processes of organisms, of cephalization, the way in which head ends develop out of a body, um, uh, allometric growth patterns, all the different scientific things that, that, that are operating uh, in the shapes of animals as they grow. And my biomorphs uh, have their own rules and they've developed over many years, ever since the 1940s. Uh, and those rules uh, are something that I don't know about consciously, but unconsciously I'm very aware of them. And I know, as I say, when they go wrong. For some reason, I have this in my mind. I have a book of yours called 69 Surrealists. Oh, yes. Why 69? Oh, <laughs> that was rather silly because they originally asked me to do 100 surrealists. And when I did it, the book was far too big. So they said, sorry, it's much too big. Uh, so they cut it down. Uh, and that left me with 69 uh, texts that I'd written about 69 surrealists that were removed. And I said to them, look, I've done all that work. I, I don't want it to be lost. Uh, do you mind if I just print a little limited edition of 100 copies with those texts in. So that's why it's 69 series. They're the leftovers from the lives oh. of the <laughs> And if you put the lives of the surrealists and 69 surrealists together, you have 100 surrealists. All right. Well, look at me. I have the the, the complete volume. 